sometimes I wonder what it would be like to be a fly on the wall of a Disney writing room. Does everyone in those meetings think the same? Or is there some type of creative energy in place where people actually have a say? Is the hive mind so deeply embedded that shows and movies that Disney produces have essentially become a series of boxes checked in their never-ending quest for the holy grail of diversity, equity, and inclusion? Does no one think for themselves anymore? Or have all of Hollywood's so-called writers become like the seagulls in Finding Nemo, without any collective brain cells or creative talent to rub together in order to produce a show that isn't complete garbage? Apparently not, because Marvel is taking a break from their propaganda pushing in order to let Star Wars once more take center stage in the culture wars. At this point, I kind of just want both entertainment divisions to take a nice long break and not produce anything for a few years. They're just losing money anyway. This might actually be a smart business decision. But with Bob Iger in charge and parts of the Disney zombie beginning to fall off and hit the ground, it doesn't look as if they'll stop until bankruptcy is declared. Is it a bad thing that I don't think that that's a bad thing? I was initially looking forward to the release of The Acolyte. It's supposed to be set in the days of the High Republic, which was an era that I was eager to learn more about. The Jedi were far more prominent in this time period, in a galaxy far, far away, and the idea of seeing them at the height of their power was intriguing. Of course, this was before entertainment made me a bit more jaded and cynical, but what can you do? I was hoping to learn more about Star Wars history and be introduced to an earlier version of the Sith that we hadn't seen before, which would hopefully be different from the over-the-top, screaming, dark side of villains that have been a dime a dozen in Star Wars lately. But instead, we get this. From the outset, we are introduced to a group of children who are engaging in pseudo-intellectual nonsense with their Jedi Master, which will likely be the basis for the Acolyte's disillusionment with the Order as a whole. We don't know who the Acolyte is, just that it's a she, because it's always a she these days, because the Force is female, don't you know? She is apparently this dreadlocked individual who looks less intimidating than last Christmas's fruitcake, and yet who we're all supposed to be impressed by. She's also a Sith in training, who has been radicalized by the dark side, and who apparently has more power than all of these trained Jedi put together. Yet another big shocker. We don't know really anything else about her, other than the fact that she is a strong, diverse female who has decided that, once again, power is the most important thing in the universe. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power, and who is allowed to use it. Someone needs to call J.K. Rowling so she can sue for copyright infringement. Are all female characters seriously the same these days? If they're not talking about power, they're thinking about power, or displaying themselves in powerful ways that apparently nobody else has or can do. The Jedi in this trailer, particularly the males, are made out to be some type of punks, and of course the only Jedi who could hold their own against this acolyte are the female ones. Because once again, of course they can. The only person allowed to take on another woman and win these days is, of course, another woman. And they have to be these stoic, emotionless zombies while they're doing it, so the rest of us can see just how bland and boring and unrealistic and dull that they are. I've spoken at length about degradation of female characters who have traded likability, relatability, and depth for narcissism and nihilism, and at this point it's getting old. We all know characters like this are written to send the audience a message and not to impart any lasting lessons or themes. We all know that there is very little worth caring about in this new age of entertainment that has been created, and yet we keep on getting it in the face of declining viewing numbers, poor audience review scores, and consistent revenue losses. And most of those things are due in part to the writing and dialogue being front and center, even though I'm beginning to wish we could just return to the era of silent pictures. That at least would be interesting. The dialogue of this trailer is, of course, as painful as the acting, and if this didn't include lightsabers, I might have thought it was nothing more than a generic sci-fi fantasy released on Amazon Prime to try and entice viewers away from Netflix and Disney+. Plus. Most of the Jedi spend the trailer stumbling around in the dark and asking questions while a strong, diverse female character in a hood runs around trying to stab people. I'm not entirely certain what the show's point is or who they are trying to set up a villain arc for but it's certainly never going to be a memorable one. However, everyone is fixating on this line. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. And while it is terrible, we all understand why it is and are railing against it. 
The director, however, Leslie Headland, doesn't seem to share this opinion. Like most Hollywood higher-ups, she seems to be both a panderer and someone who is also wildly out of touch with what the fans want and what Star Wars is actually all about. Remember the days of heroism, valor, courage, compassion, redemption, and sacrifice that this IP used to remind us of? Remember when we had characters who believed in staunch concepts like morals and virtues without compromising on them for any reasons? Remember when deconstructing a character or outright erasing values just wasn't a thing? Apparently Leslie Headland doesn't, or else she just doesn't care, because she seems to think that exploring the franchise from the perspective of the villains was a wildly insightful idea, because they were outnumbered at this point in Star Wars history, and as a result, are the underdogs. Star Wars has always been a story about good versus evil. The dangers of power, and those strong enough to resist the pull of the dark side. Those who trust in the Force and fight for what's right no matter what. Trying to dupe fans into believing that nothing is good or bad anymore, and that morality doesn't exist or else is just an irrelevant concept, not only does nothing to create good stories, it simply turns all forms of entertainment into poor propaganda that reeks of cynicism and desperation and ignorance. But Leslie Headland seems to have no trouble displaying her ignorance about Star Wars or about how to direct entertainment entirely. She seems to be rather proud of it, in fact. Like, you just have to have the confidence to walk in there and pretend like you know how to do it. Um, I'm telling you guys, like, the truth. Like, that's how I made my first film, was that I was like, I know what's going on. I didn't at all. Additionally, of course, this show looks as if it will place much more of an emphasis on everyone's favorite battering ram these days, representation, because we just haven't gotten enough of that ever in the history of cinema. And with a director who is so hung up on the idea of seeing herself and others on screen rather than telling a good story with likable characters, a compelling plot, and captivating dialogue, well, is it any wonder why we can tell right away that this show is going to be bad? It's not a surprise, and it's certainly not a surprise to the fans who have already ratioed this trailer to high heaven. It might not even be a surprise to some of the showrunners because this show was announced four years ago and we are only now getting a trailer about two months before it's set to release. They know it's going to be embarrassing, they probably already know that it's going to be a flop, and are just delaying the inevitable for as long as they can. And honestly, I think that's a good thing. A little shame never hurt anyone at all, and if the late release of this trailer is any indication, there's going to be a lot of that. Here's hoping that people realizing the shameful nature of their own creations from classic IPs becomes a trend, and this nonsense slowly begins to die out. At this point, we can only hope. I could say something about hope breeding eternal misery, but I think I'll just leave it there for now. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. What do you think of the trailer for The Acolyte, and are you planning to watch the show? Be sure to leave me your thoughts down in the comment section, and let the conversations begin. Until next time, everyone.